In order to make the finest ice cream, you're going to need to get yourself one of these A2, A2 Jersey cows. And to get the very best milk out of her, you're going to want to make sure to scratch her and love her up and let her chew on you for a little bit. And you can tell that she's sufficiently loved up by the fact that when you open the gate to the paddock, she trots voluntarily directly into the milking stanchion like this. Now, Jersey milk is not like that Holstein milk that you buy in the grocery store. That milk is 4% butterfat by volume, whereas this cow is going to put out about 12% butterfat by volume. Once your cow has installed herself into the milking stanchion, you'll want to clean her up, and make sure her teats are free of debris. And then I'm using lard infused with rosemary and oregano for a bag bomb so that there isn't any petroleum product or anything gross on her teats. I'll put a link in the description to this little milking pump that I bought off of Amazon. I was having some trigger finger issues, so it lasted most of the season. Not a great one, but it got me through. Once you get your cow all milked out, you take that milk and put it in the refrigerator and let it cool. And then to get the best eggs, you're going to want to feed your chickens well. Here they are eating some frozen colostrum. Keep them good and healthy. And if you're treating your chickens right and letting them free range, they'll produce many wonderful eggs for you. And because these birds are in the sunshine and eating insects and grass and things like that, the yolks end up very nice. So if you were using industrial Holstein milk, the ratio would be two cups of cream to one cup of milk. But because the Jersey milk is so rich, one cup of cream and two cups of milk works out pretty well. So you'll skim off the cream from the top of this non-homogenized raw milk and get yourself a cup of the cream and then shake up another jar so that you get the milk back in a suspension with the cream and then we'll pour off our two cups of whole milk into the measuring cup. Using actual vanilla beans in this recipe, I'll put a link for these in the description as well. And you want to split them so that the uh, seeds are exposed to the milk as we simmer it. So take two of these beans and split them down the middle. Into the pot they go. And our three quarters of a cup of raw organic cane sugar. And about a half a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt goes in there as well. Put this on the stove to simmer and separate these eggs. I like to do this by hand. There are many ways you can do it, but this is the way I learned in the restaurant business. So we'll separate out our six yolks and you can see the color of those yolks there. You don't get that chickens living in a Quonset hut eating just grain feed. So over a medium heat, we're going to heat up this uh, milk mixture and allow the vanilla to infuse into it and the sugar and salt to dissolve. When it's almost hot enough, the beans come out and then we're going to scrape the seeds with a knife from the inside of the beans, both sides of each beans, and then put that back in our milk mixture. When that just begins to simmer, cut the heat, take your eggs, mix them up a little bit, now we're going to temper these egg yolks. If we were to just add this hot milk, they would cook and you'd have scrambled eggs. So we're kind of slowly raising the temperature of the eggs with a couple little folds of the hot milk mixture. And by heating the milk separately, we can have most of the cooking time done without risk of overcooking this custard. And once they're tempered, we can just pour in the rest of the mixture like so. Now I like to add a little bit of water to that very same pot put it on high heat and then use that as a double boiler to bring this custard the rest of the way. It only needs to come up to about 170 degrees so it doesn't take long since we added that hot milk to it. Once it seems like it's starting to cling to the bowl a little bit we'll put our thermometer in and sure enough we're at about 165 degrees here so only five degrees to go. Don't want to go too far and once we've got that temperature, we'll strain it to get all those little snotty bits off the egg yolks out of our custard. And there we go.
go. This goes in the fridge overnight. The next day, add it to the tumbler of our ice cream machine. I prefer these old school machines to the frozen chambered ones. And of course I scraped all those vanilla seeds out too. But by using this old style with the ice and the rock salt, it doesn't matter if you're rushing your custard, if it were a little too hot, you're not limited by the amount of cold storage in one of those freeze the tumbler types. So layer up your rock salt and your ice and get this churning. It'll take about 20 to 30 minutes. And then I like to put it into these uh, pint jars, which ends up being one serving if you're like me. And that way I can just go out to the freezer in the barn and grab one and eat it. And I don't have to take the ice cream back out. And there you go. Best ice cream in the world. <laughs>